And we continue our conversation with Republican State Senate candidate Eric Wimberger. Uh, on your campaign website, you uh, have an item that says uh, massive centralized bureaucratic control leads to false promises. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, uh, a bureaucracy is slow. It's like going to the DMV. Um, you're not always going to get what you want at the right time. Things get denied. And someone who's going to say that they're going to expand this and do that, um, it, never, it never works. And it's so expensive, it might be impractical. The best thing that you can do for people is to understand that government has a role in maintaining an orderly society and uh, making, making sure people aren't being hurt. Uh, but, uh, but then you have to just make, maintain that stability so people can go out and, um, and do the best they, uh, you know, kind of attain their dreams by going out and maximizing their freedom and their, and their potential. Uh, so to, to wait on a bureaucrat to solve your problems, uh, I don't think has ever really worked. Um, I, I, I was in the Marine Corps and I know uh, how awful it is to wait for rules to come around and, and orders and things like that. And it's always ham-handed and, uh, and never very efficient at all. Um, and of course the Marines are, are very good at what they do, uh, but it does take an, an inordinate amount of resources to do that and, uh, and inefficiencies. So uh, in, the, in the scope of maintaining a, a good society, um, having a, a bureaucracy and waiting on that is, not, is just not going to be functional. So what difference will it make to the average voter out there by having government get out of my life, step away? Um, you know, well, by step away, I don't mean uh, not be there to help out uh, when needed. Mm -hmm. It's just um, helping out when needed and helping out when wanted is different. Everybody needs to take care of their own affairs and then uh, add a little more so they, they can uh, contribute to society, do the best they can, and then, and then exceed. Uh, and the, the best way to do that, um, to advance our, our, uh, our community here, um, is to allow people to go out and, um, and attain their, their own vision of what they want. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's just important to, uh, to maintain that sort of dynamic in our, in our society to uh, maximize um, economic development and innovation uh, so that we can all live a good life here. Mm -hmm. We uh, mentioned the racial divide earlier in the uh, program um, and how the whole George Floyd Minnesota thing has impacted business and you say we need responsible policing. What's your plan for responsible policing? What is that? Right. Now there's a few, I've actually litigated a, a, a few of these um, excessive force type cases. Yep. Um, and what I see going on is so counterproductive to any of that. You see uh, just donations going into political funds, um, which isn't going to do anything. Every, every, every police force uh, is enforcing a, a law that is passed in Madison. Um, so they go out and do that, and police are people, and we try to train them to be professional, and if there's something missing there, then we need to shore that up. But they're also a bureaucracy. So when someone is injured, you have to file a claim. And that claim, uh, a lot, most of the time, is denied. And then it goes to the city or the county that organizes that police force. And they vote on it to whether to pass that claim. Um, and most of the time it's denied because there was an investigation, you know, clearing everybody. So if, if, their claim is, if, if the claim from, uh, from the protesters uh, or advocates is that, uh, well, we're, we're letting people get away with things and the bureaucracy isn't satisfying those needs, um, what really is helpful and what would really actually solve the problem is that after the city or the county denies the claim, if you file in state court, you have six months to do that from the denial, or you have six years on a on a 1983 claim in, in the federal courts, you all these things lose if you don't have a use of force expert on board to, um, uh, to talk about it. Because you as the person who might be injured um, can talk about that you were injured, but, uh, but you can't talk about whether that use of force was excessive because the word excessive is an industry standard. 
what, what people need who think that they are being abused by police is some sort of funding to pay for uh, use of force experts. And that's where the, all these claims stop is, uh, is at that point when they're faced with a ten or twenty thousand dollar retainer on a use of force expert and it goes away. Mm -hmm. um, now many, many claims that people file are bogus uh, and, and they're just being uh, you know, anti-police or what have you. But there are also genuines that, genuine ones that do fall, uh, that go under the carpet uh, because uh, you, can't, you don't have the, the money to litigate. Um, so the professionalism and training, that's something that government can do is to make sure that there's training for police appropriately. But each department has use of force standards and they do that to avoid excessive force claims. And, uh, and if, these, if these protesters really wanted to do something, they wouldn't riot. They would actually come together in a way that creates a, some sort of a fund. I hear they raised close to a billion dollars already that isn't going to a fund like um, paying for use of force experts for these people. We are back with more with Eric Wimberger right after this. Please stay with us.